Hi and hello and good morning wherever you are in the world. This is day two of the Wimbledon Coffee Morning presented by Lavazza. My name is Danny Jameson. And I'm Amri Batson. And can you believe it's day two at Wimbledon? And I wonder what the Championships has in store for us today. <laughs> day that was I think I'm still recovering from it actually there were so <laughs> many twists and turns yesterday heartbreak though for Alexandra Zero however we are on day two which means Roger Federer Serena Williams are going to beat Garbina and Muguruza start their campaigns today indeed I know I thought day two was meant to be the crazy <laughs> one but day one was unbelievable amazing day. <laughs> amazing day absolutely but you and I had some first day experiences indeed. yesterday so I went out amongst the crowd yesterday and stood among Hung, him and Hill with the crowd as they're watching on the big screen some of the matches there were lots of oohs and ahs and standing up and clapping and jeering and everything that goes with it amazing stuff so we put that out on Insta story as well and then later in the day we went down to the boards where they can show when the players are starting mm. to exit various rounds of the competition or the tournament and we were watching them putting up the names which was fascinating to watch it's really intricate isn't it it's a lot it it's a lot more complicated than it looks believe me if you're coming down it's right by the uh, right by the main gates just uh, just over to our left you're yes. right it's well worth uh, well worth a little look and what were you up to yesterday i had a really good afternoon so i went down to court 12 um because i didn't realize it was canada day yesterday i didn't realize so it was happy canada, canada day, day happy to canada our, day our, our canadian viewers across <laughs> the pond hopefully the guys on the west coast maybe i'm not sure what the time difference is enjoying the last vestiges of that so i watched the vast Sec Pospisil uh, and Felix Auger Aliassime, who was excellent, by the way. Could you believe that was his first Grand Slam victory of his entire career? Amazing. He looked really good doing it as well. I've never seen as many maple leaves in all of my life in the red and white of the Canadian flag. That was awesome. And then uh, after that, went over to watch Stefanos Tsitsipas, who uh, had a rough old time of it against the excellent, it has to be said, Thomas excellent. Fabiano, who was he was an entertaining watch. He was indeed, um, and I understand that you learned some new words yesterday. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean Stefano Tsitsipas, I, I love him, he's, he's so so cool, he's like a proper throwback look he's got going on, but um, yeah, he wasn't having the best time of it, he was uh, yeah, shouting away up to his players box, I learned some new Greek words which was nice, um, but yeah, Thomas Fabiano, maybe one to watch for, for round two, he's really entertaining, if you've, if you've never seen him before, every time he's hitting a big winner or something down the line, he was really getting into it, the crowd were getting up for it as well, they were really enjoying um, watching his performance. But it's not just about us talking about mm. our experiences. We want you to get involved in the conversation too. Exactly, yeah. We want you, to, if you have any Wimbledon stories, share them with us. Use the hashtag Wimbledon or the hashtag uh, join the story. We've also got a Facebook group, Wimbledon join the story. Uh, send us in photos, videos, stories. Maybe you've been down to Wimbledon for your first time with your family. Maybe it's, uh, you've seen some big matches on the grounds. Maybe you've, uh, you've never been. You're watching overseas. Maybe you're watching at home in the garden, having a little garden party. Share it with us and we'll try and get as many as we can on the show. Yeah, definitely tell us where you're watching it, the uh, the show as well, because we were looking at some of the tweets that were coming through yesterday. There were people watching from around the <laughs> it, world, which it was amazing. absolutely blew my mind. It was fantastic. But yeah, send us your stories. We'll try and feature as many as we can uh, on the show. Now, yesterday, my word, we saw some big hits, some big shots, and here are the very best of them. On the line. That is an absolutely remarkable find from Fabiano. Oh, that's wonderful, isn't it? Full stretch, just moves around the court like she's gliding on grass.
glorious shot. I thought, and I think Osaka thought it was going to go to the backhand. She was uh, covering that side, and then that Real. happened. such composure out here and so much confidence no hesitation oh that's a special point well again one point for the winner but 10 points for style yep the Harlem Globe Trotters book there, didn't he? Some absolutely brilliant hot shots there from day one. Mm. Some, um, and it was only day one, so... Come on, two weeks of this. I know, <laughs> Incredible. I, know, I know. But it wasn't just some amazing hot shots that were taking place yesterday. There were some big seas that went out as well. Oh, yes. Um, shall we start though, right where the day ended? Yes. Because I think the biggest story, certainly for me, and the one I think across the world that's been captivated pretty much everybody, was the last match on number one court, yes. where the 15 year old Corey Goff faced off against her idol growing up, Venus Williams. And she didn't just give her a good old game, she ended up beating her. 6 4, 6 4, absolutely. And what I loved about it is that they had a bit of a conversation at the net. Yeah. And Corey mentioned that. You know, Venus was her idol, and thanks for being there, and congratulations, and amazing. And also, it wasn't just Venus offering her congratulations to Corey. A certain Billie Jean King tweeted about it as well. Indeed she did. I mean, look, if it's not so bad getting, uh, getting Venus Williams' approval, but then getting probably the all-time legend of American tennis uh, to watch your match and, fi and feel uh, good things for you as well. Absolutely awesome. One of my favourite things as well, there's a great shot going around, you probably saw it on your, uh, on your local broadcaster, of the final point. It's trained on Corey's face. You can see the concentration all the way through until that final point is won. And then she, you, she automatically she turns into that 15-year-old that we keep forgetting that she is. And you can see just the joy and the happiness on her face. It's really, really cool. And even though there are a few tears, um, right at the end of that match as well as she was lapping up the, the crowd appreciation. Actually, and looking to her box as well, looking yeah, at her yeah. who were going, who were jumping up and down and cheering like anything. It was a great sight mm. to see, absolutely amazing. But even amongst the tears, she did manage to, to compose herself and then applaud Venus off the court, which I thought absolutely. was awesome. I mean, she's the, 50, well. the only 15. I think we've got a fair few years of hearing her name around these parts. Absolutely, absolutely. But as mentioned, there were a couple of other C's that mm. went out yesterday as well. A couple, loads. Well, quite, <laughs> we've already mentioned Alexander Zverev yeah. exiting out at round one, round one, but also Stefano Tsitsipas, yeah. as we were talking about earlier. Who else? Uh, well, unfortunately, we lost the, the second seed in the ladies' draw, Naomi Osaka as well, which was, she looked... She was really upset, I think, at, at the end of the, of the match, doing her media. It was, it was very difficult not to, to feel sorry for. It's not been um, the best year so far, I guess, but um, I was talking to some of the, the, the Japanese media who were over here, and I think they were almost as disappointed as she was. She's such a big star over there. Um, but hopefully she'll be, she'll be all right. We'll see her bounce back. But yeah, we sort of predicted that she might have trouble because yes, she, lost, uh, in, saving, yeah. um, she lost, didn't she, in, um, in Birmingham yes. only a couple of weeks ago to the same opponent. So, you know, listen, shocks happen even on day one. Some positive stuff though from day one. Mm. Simona Hallett playing on the revamped number one court also tweeted about yes. it as well, didn't Your she? Your mate. <laughs> My mate who loves her flowers too. Yeah, she was absolutely delighted to play on number one court yesterday. Indeed, yeah, not a bad way to kick off the newly revamped with the brand new roof. Uh, and she looked rather good, did Simona? She did, she did, absolutely. And then of course, Brit Watch, of course, we've got Carl Edmund who went one in straight sets yesterday as well, and Heather Watson. Indeed, both of them straight through. We need some good British stories. We like them round here. We don't get too, <laughs> so we can't get too excited, can we, as, as British tennis fans, but they both look pretty good going, uh, going through to round two. And hopefully, We'll have some uh, some interest in both of those going into the weekend as yeah, well. Absolutely, Indeed. exciting stuff. So, here are five things that you guys need to know about day two.
All of some big names in action today. Now, it could take us all the way through them all. Nick McCarvel's back. Am I responsible oh. for every big name today? Absolutely. Absolutely. Happening? Yes. Well, good thing I've brought my a trusty chalkboard. Exactly, today. yeah. <laughs> now, we'll get on to your match picks a little bit later on. You're the biggest name of all, of course. No, no, no. Today. There's a lot of tennis players out there <laughs> in action. What I mean, day one was incredible, mm. right? The buzz, all the upsets, so excited for round one to be complete today. Indeed. Oh, we've oh, already chalkboard lost the chalkboard down. Oh, the chalkboard Unforced down. Unforced error. Hey, maybe that's an omen. Am I out? That's Am I gone? No, no, no. That's an omen for more seeds are going to fall today. That's the prediction. Oh, very well done. More seeds are going to fall today. Too thanks good. To yeah. <laughs> Live TV, eh? You can't kick out for the weather. Anyway, right, let's go through the, the men's draw because today we have probably two of the biggest names in the men's draw, both in action. Yeah, we certainly do. I mean, it's going to be a huge day. Of course, it all starts with Roger Federer taking on Lloyd Harris. You almost feel bad for Lloyd <laughs> yeah. Harris. That's to... a lot, Lloyd. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> tough for him as a South African coming in. I think he's going to have a lot of support, but center court against Federer, it's a big occasion for him. But I think just for Fed overall today, he's obviously the favorite here. And then Rafael Nadal, who's come in not necessarily happy about his seeding at the number three seed. He's ranked number two. They flip-flopped those two guys. But I think Rafa today on the number one court, against Yuichi Seguta if Nadal plays his uh, best tennis he's certainly favored there indeed now some of the um, big names that people might want to check out was the game that you was was on your blackboard before okay it was... I should grab it right go on, let's grab yeah, it yeah, why yeah. not while we're here because this <laughs> is the one is. other way around there That's we go <laughs> seat preview of the women's draw there um, <laughs> this is the one when the draw was made this was probably the one that I was most excited about it's an all Aussie clash between Nick Kyrgios and Jordan Thompson now does this depend on which Nick Kyrgios turns up uh, yeah, in a sense. So this is big for a few reasons. I think because the winner most likely would play Rafael Nadal in yes, round two. That's right. There's some uh, there's some war of words between <laughs> Rafael Nadal and Nick Kyrgios. Maybe not a war of words, but there's been some. Can we um, call it beef? Yeah, there's maybe a little beef. There's... Nick Kyrgios really gets up for the big matches, mm. right? He beat Rafa here a few years ago. But I actually think I, I highlighted this one before I threw it off the table. Was <laughs> Jordan Thompson is playing really dang good tennis. He really is. And these guys haven't played each other before, but they've played doubles together. Oh. And Jordan Thompson actually just made the semis in Alt in in Antalya, which was the Turkey event, the warm-up event. He's a really good grass court player. He's playing with confidence. He's got uh, the dirty mustache going. It's all happening <laughs> for Jordan Thompson. I think if Nick Kyrgios shows up, the Nick Kyrgios, he's the favorite here. But Danny, not by too much. And then, of course, that's why I highlight this match today is that, yes, the winner most likely mm. would take on Rafael Nadal. Should be entertaining at the very, very least. Another potentially entertaining one is going to happen right behind us, yeah. actually, uh, with Francis Tiafo and Fabio Fognini. Now, Massive. this is, I've noted down the word, box office. It really is. It's <laughs> popcorn. You need a bucket of popcorn to watch Fonini against TFO. Right now my feeling is um, even as the American, that Fonini is just playing confident yeah, tennis. And Francis Tiafo has just struggled a little bit. He made the quarterfinals at the Australian Open, really had um, basically had a school lesson from Rafael Nadal that day on court. Um, and I think he's been trying to figure himself out since then. He's 13 and 14 this season on tour. That's not the kind of mm. tennis that Francis knows that he can play. But I really think that if he can win maybe that first set and get himself settled in against Fabio Fonini, but you're right, it's going to be packed on this is a perfect court 18 I know I know oftentimes that the schedulers are ridiculed here you know who should be on what court this is a perfect court 18 match brilliant I don't think we'll be it. moving I don't think from our spot because <laughs> court 18 quite literally is there right behind it's us there we can watch it from uh, from our vantage point can I ask for a prediction from you on that particular match which way do you think it'll go yeah just for me unless mm. TFO gets his sort of his hands around that first set I think Fonini comes through in that match so for me, I think Dominic Team is facing a slightly tricky opponent for his first round match. He's mm. going to be up against Sam Querrey. What's your thoughts on that one? Yeah, well, actually, I mean, that's a big, uh, the number two court is packed with great matches all day today. I think Dominic Team. that's a tough ask because uh, grass is decidedly not his best surface. And he hasn't played any warm-up events beforehand, has he? Okay, wow, hasn't he? Okay, so that's big for him. Yeah. And then I think Sam Querrey just made the final in uh, Eastbourne. Sam Querrey has been a semi-finalist here. 
He's beaten Andy Murray here. He's got the huge serve. He's not necessarily the same Sam, Sam Query that made the semis, but I think that, yeah. So are you picking Sam Query to beat Dominic Thiem? I'm, lean, I'm leaning Ooh. towards it. You yeah. had a good pick yesterday yeah. with yeah. FAA. Yeah, came thank through. You, thank you, thank I, you. I went out on a limb and picked Pierre Ugaber, who I think won like eight games <laughs> yeah. against Kevin Anderson. So you guys bring me in as the tennis expert, and I failed there. I wasn't going to mention you. And then today I'm throwing today. chalkboards, so I don't know why. I don't think I'll be He's invited be back, invited to, day back three. tomorrow. Um, now we've got to mention a couple of one of the Brits, Paul Job. Now he uh, from uh, from Yorkshire yeah. went over to um, to the US, yep. enrolled at UNC, and is the NCAA the college champion. Yeah, he's year. actually University of South Carolina. Oh. He's a gamecock. USC, and he's the first, sorry, he's the first British player. Danny to win the NCAA title and it's a huge story I mean he, he grew up in council housing which is public housing and he's come from very little and he's a really hard worker I actually had the chance to I was um, the uh, uh, American the sore thumb in a uh, British scrum <laughs> with Paul Jubb a few days ago and Paul Jubb is a hard worker and just a fantastic story to follow fantastic absolutely so Speaking of fantastic stories, mm. my colleague here, Danny, had the opportunity <laughs> to pop over to Stuttgart and meet his friend, Joe Wilfred Songer. Oh, have you technical issues? I'll tell you what, why don't you tell us, how was Joe Wilfred Tsonga when you met him out in Stuttgart? I think he might be my favourite person in the world. <laughs> I absolutely, honestly, I, he was so, so nice, the loveliest fella. He's so popular around here and it's so easy to see why. Can I just interject here? Yeah, Dan sure, Danny yeah. and I had lunch the other day and he was glowing <laughs> really? from his, his meeting with yeah. Joe, who's, who's really an affable, uh, affable guy. He's been on tour for a long time. He's in his 30s now. He's got a little boy who's been running around. He's uh, been dealing with some illness, but he is just always lovely. And he's also a former uh, Wimbledon finalist. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's someone that has done really well here and he's someone that I think could, if he gets his, maybe the first couple matches, if he gets his feet under him, he could make a nice little run here. I think this one is going to be an entertaining match because he's going to be facing a certain Bernard Tomic. Mm. Which, let's see mm. which Bernard Tomic turns up. <laughs> Discuss. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I just, you know, Bernard Tomic has, has showed flashes mm. of his former top 15 form um, recently, but I, I really do think that Sanga, if the serve is on, this should be a, a match for Sanga to win. Now we've seen him uh, hanging out with David Hay, Joe Wilfred in the build-up to yeah. this, which, is, which isn't bad. Also, did you see the clip um, knocking around of him playing uh, football as well? I missed it. The, oh, you, it was fantastic. You can search it out on Twitter. It's really, Are you really going to be invited into Joe Wilfred's box? <laughs> I mean, I'm doing all I can today? to try and get in there, yeah. I mean, it's either that... He's watching right now. Hi, Joe. Really so. Hi, Joe. Nice to see you again. Don't forget about us as well, Joe, by the yeah, way. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Uh, but this is this is a man as he's getting advanced in in his career, but mm. he's one of the very very few players to have beaten all of the big four. Yeah, I mean you know it's, it's, he's part of that sort of generation of David Ferrer who just mm. retired. You've got Thomas Burdich who's trying to make a comeback from his own injuries, and now uh, Sanga's been dealing with a sickle cell illness that actually most affects him when he's traveling. So he's had to travel less this season. But listen, he can still play some of the best ball in tennis. I actually was in Brisbane when he started the season in January. And he just said, I'm out here to enjoy it, but I want to be I want to be beating those top guys. Again, I think it's going to take him a couple matches to work his way into into this tournament in particular. And I, I do think that he's going to beat Bernie. You agree? I think so. I think so. I think so. And also, he also got married as well, which is great mm -hmm. for him, which is yeah. fantastic news. Yeah, totally. Yeah. You don't need to ask me whether I think he's going to win, do you? <laughs> no, I don't. I, that's very apparent, Danny. <laughs> um, on, the, on the fact that he got married, do we see things like that sometimes help a, a player's career? Because he's had a problem with injury, had knee surgery last year. Will things like that help him sort of secure himself and, and give him a platform to, to build his, his comeback? As, yeah, as I think so. I mean, you both work in sport. Otherwise, I think when you see athletes who are happy off the court, we saw it with Andy Murray when uh, he and Kim had their first. I think that really settled him. And he's, you've got, you also realize, I think Serena has shown us a lot with Olympia, that when you've got that uh, maybe next level of importance in your life, not that tennis isn't important, of course, but when you have those other things to concern you, you focus more on what the job is that you need to get done on the 
court and then you're focused on getting home to your partner or your child and yeah I think that could serve him pretty well you just you just want to continue that yeah. Joe Glow basically That's yeah. it. Joe yeah. Glow I like that I'm going to be on the thick end of a restraining order if I'm not careful <laughs> uh, right so it's great to see Joe Wilfred back as the gates open we should mention that as it yes. just goes half past ten one man who we may be seeing here for the very final time today is a crowd favourite Marcos Bagdatis There we go, a lovely video there of Marcus Bagdadis. Are we saying goodbye to him? Yeah, we, yeah, no, we are, for sure. This yeah, is it. He this said is it. as much. This is it. I, I, you know, he's had a great career. Uh, he's been top 10 in the world. He was a Grand Slam finalist. He surprised all of us at the Australian Open years ago. And, and he said basically he, he married the former women's player, Carolina Sprem, who beat Venus Williams here years ago. He basically said it's time for, for me and for my family. He, he's not had his body right uh, the last couple of years, but um, Baghdadis, he's always an enter entertaining one. And I think today against Braden Schnur, we could see more, maybe some final Baghdadis fireworks. Do you think today, though, will be the day that we say goodbye? Because no. he's calling it a day after this tournament. Yeah, yeah. We, you know, he yeah. could keep going, keep going. I, I don't. I, I do see, I, I mean, Braden Schnur is a, a good, consistent player from the baseline. Um, I do think that Marcos is going to get some of that Marcos magic Marcos on magic. court. Yeah, I, I think he'll win through that one into the second round. I do love Marcos by that. It's <laughs> something about the long hair and the bandana. He's got a bit of flair about him, hasn't Swagger he? Swagger as well. Swagger, that's the word. Yeah. Totally. And he's just one of those magnetic. We were talking about Joe Wilfred Sanga. Mm. Sorry to bring him up again. Oh, but no. He's one oh, of those no. magnetic on. players <laughs> that you look at Bagdadis and Sanga and Malfis and Vavrinka and Benoit Pair. There's just these players on the men's tour that whenever you're at an ATP event, you always want to go and check out where is X playing and Marcos has been one of those players. And we, have we mentioned already he made the semi-final in 2006 I believe is that yeah, right? Yeah, here. So, yeah, that, yeah here. so it just it's so long ago but at the same time what a career that he's had. Mm, yeah I, I mean massive he's had a great run here he had that success at the Australian Open and um, yeah we're gonna miss him. We are indeed. Yeah. If you're coming down, court eight is the second match on today. You will not be disappointed, I promise you, as entertaining as anything. Right, we've not talked about the, the ladies' draw because this is the day where we see pretty much all of the big names. They're all in this half of the draw. Yeah, I mean, we had a, a big day yesterday. We have an even bigger day today on the women's side. And, of course, all eyes on Serena Williams. Also, all eyes on the woman that beat her in the final last year, Angelique Kerber. They're both kicking off, and we mentioned it yesterday a little bit. They're both in that quarter of death they could mm. face off uh, in the mid-rounds here at Wimbledon. Uh, I think you look at the lineup today with Angelique and Serena both on center court. You've got world number one Ash Barty on the number one court, and then you've got Joe Conta on the number one court to follow her. It's an embarrassment of WTA riches. <laughs> <laughs> That's the wrong way to put it. Uh, let's talk about Sloane Stevens as well. Yes. Because, you know, grass court record what do you think 
Yeah, I mean, listen, she's made the fourth round here a couple times. Um, she was on my chalkboard that uh, <laughs> we've uh, gotten rid of here at this point. For what um, the reasons? She's got Tamea Baczynski, who's also coming back from some niggles herself. I think uh, the grass actually favors Sloan. Anne Marie, um, and I think for Sloan, it's about just those first couple of matches. I've mentioned that with a couple players, with Joe, with Stan Wawrinka. They are diesel engines. They need to get themselves revved up and into tournaments. But Baczynski can be difficult. She yeah. chops and slices and dices and does all these tricky things on court. So I think Sloan, if she can get past that, but also just that number two court today. You've got Sloan, you've got your pick of Dami team against Sam Query, and then you've got Maria Sharapova against Parlene Parmentier. That's going to be a tough one for Shazza. She's what one of six Wimbledon champions on the ladies' side. Is it? Yeah. yeah. today, which is mm. absolutely extraordinary. And we barely mentioned the world number one. We saw the, the Australian news channels we were just over to our right this morning broadcasting yeah. late uh, evening. Evening over there. Hello, Australians. Um, Ash Barty in action today as well, riding a 12 match winning streak. Yeah, I mean, it's phenomenal. You look at that win in uh, Paris and then that win in Birmingham to get to world number one. Uh, you know, I think that she's handled it really well. I think she's going to feel the pressure walking out on court today, the number one court against Zhang Sai Sai, who's actually a tough customer. Zhang Sai Sai is a really good doubles player. She's actually had recently some really good single success. She's inside the top 50. And so don't look past. We saw Putin Seva. We saw Poots yesterday bash the ball past uh, Osaka. I just think today for Ash Barty, she's got to make sure she plays her brand of tennis. Be aggressive, mm -hmm. serve well, get to the net, use that all court game, use the slice backhand to kind of um, neutralize the court. But there will be some butterflies around that number one court walk. On. Centre court, we've got Tatiana Maria versus Angelique Kerber, yeah. of course, the defending champion, one of my faves, of course. <laughs> um, Angelique Kerber, semi finalist at Eastbourne. Yep. I think, you know, I think Kerber can get through this one quite easy in straight sets. What do you think? Yeah, I think it'll be interesting. Um, it, this is an all German clash, and I think if I'm, if I'm right, yeah, so it's actually 1 0 to Tatiana Maria, which is interesting when you look to the, at that head to head. And shout out to Tatiana, who is one of the mothers on tour. And as good friends well. with Serena as well. Yeah, they live near each yeah, other in yeah, Florida. Florida yeah. good, look at you. Again, the tennis knowledge, <laughs> Anne Marie. Um, <laughs> I think that this is going to be a tough one for Angelique, but I, I really liked what I saw from her, as you mentioned, in Eastbourne, mm -hmm. and she seems to be taking things in stride. Now, again, that center court, walking out, these are situations, you look at Barty as world number one, number one court. You look at Kerber, center court, defending champ. That's not easy, and sometimes that pressure has gotten to Kerber, so she's got to make sure that she has a strong start. She needs Danny. She needs to be aggressive. That's the thing. Sometimes she lets herself mm. stay back and just retrieve. She's got to be aggressive. Yeah. Now, one match that I did circle, which may be a seed perhaps in trouble, Ons Jabur yeah. uh, is mm. taking on uh, Petra Kvitova uh, over on there. That's number three court. Um, now, this, is, this could be quite entertaining, and Ons Jabur is a very good player, is she not? Ons Jabur is very tricky. She made the semifinals in Eastbourne. She made the third round here last year. She was the first Tunisian woman to get that far in some 15 years. She is a former uh, Grand Slam champion on the junior ranks. She's actually used some ITF funding to get herself where she is in the senior ranks she's which is hard. yeah it's amazing and she is the nicest player on tour she's playing the other nicest player on tour in Petra Kvitova who is giving that left forearm a try she had to pull out of the French Open with an injury in her left forearm which is her hitting arm and so you just wonder uh, for Kvitova a tricky opponent in the fact that uh, Jabur gets a lot of balls back so Kvitova is going to need to herself be really aggressive I think the serve is going to be a key for her today but Kvitova went out to Saznovich last year on the number one court in her first match and the build up was Petra's back she's playing great tennis maybe she could win a third Wimbledon this year it's been mu much more tempered and she's got to take that approach out on court for herself Brit focus now because you know you've got to big yes, up the Brit yes let's do it uh, uh, British number one Johanna Conta taking on Anna Bogdan on number one court. Yeah, you know, for Kanta, I think it's interesting. Uh, we, I've talked about this a little bit yesterday, is that I think that she is in a good mental headspace, and I think that's really going to help her. Um, but once again, on the WTA, it's so inter entertaining right now. You just don't know what's going to happen. You've got Putin Seva beating Osaka. Look at Corey Goff and what she was able to do yesterday. They're playing really good tennis. That's the level on the WTA right now, and I think that Johanna definitely favored against Anna Bogdan, but it's not going to be an easy one. No, I think it's going to be a tricky one for sure, but... Serena Williams playing today as well. Yes. But also, there's a certain semi-final World Cup match taking place later. <laughs> Let's get Serena's thoughts on that. 
it's so funny because obviously I'm rooting for U.S. I love the team. Um, but when I was training in Paris, the British players were, were training ex exactly where I was every day. So we were at breakfast, we were at, you know, it was so fun to see how hard they worked and just how amazing they were. And they were like, I was looking at them in the gym and I'm like, okay, I, I cannot do that. And I, at one point I wanted to join in their ab exercise. I was like, I wonder if I could just scoot to the side and do exactly what they're doing. Um, so it's it's kind of cool to see, you know, being in that, I was in, in that experience of watching the, the, the Brit Lake women and then having, obviously, the team that I'm rooting for at USA go against each other. Serena Williams there with her thoughts on tonight's World Cup semi-final. And by the way, we've swapped out Nick McCarvel, USA, for Adam Hunt, UK, England. Go England, World Cup, by the way, later. Come on, England. So fine. Hello. Come on, England. How are I'm you? I'm sure Nick was giving you the come on, USA, but ignore it. We didn't they give him the chance, it. actually. We didn't no, give no. him the chance. Ignore, <laughs> ignore it. Yeah, I mean, look, we're not the only ones wishing on uh, the Lionesses good luck. Heather Watson as well tweeted this morning, wishing them the very, very best of luck. Going to be a difficult one. I really hope that the, that the English do pull through, otherwise Nick is going to be unbearable to Tomorrow morning, isn't indeed, it? Indeed. And one thing I do like about when there is a major tournament on a football tournament, we had it last year with the with the World Cup and when England are doing well, it does create a good buzz around the ground. You'll notice a, a mm. difference, particularly last year when England were playing, there was a, a slightly different feel around the ground than there was on a, on a non-match day. And you'll see that today, you know, people surreptitiously <laughs> watching the big screen and watching the tennis and then getting the phone out to just check what the scores are, if they can get a live feed of it as well. So it, it does create a nice atmosphere and there's a few cheers that ring around if England score. Absolutely. Look, I'm going to be unashamedly biased. Come on, you lionesses. Hope they do the business this evening. Now, Adam's going to be going through a bit of the best of the social media that we've seen so far. You may have seen yesterday we mentioned a couple whose Wimbledon proposal didn't quite go to plan. And luckily, I managed to track them down yesterday. So let me introduce you then to Matt and Claire, better known now as Mr and Mrs Alexander. Now, they shared their story as we're asking so many of you to do. Uh, take me back to 2011, Claire. You come down to the queue to uh, to hopefully watch some tennis. Yeah, yeah, we got in the queue nice and early as normal. We'd been um, a couple of years before, so it's something we'd done before. So I said, let's go to Wimbledon. Just thought we'd have a lovely day. Got in the queue like normal, and yeah, I was looking forward to a nice day watching some tennis. So yeah. Right, it wasn't just a nice day watching some tennis stuff because you had something up your sleeve. I, I did. I was. I was at that point. I was already petrified. I think I was probably <laughs> already crying inside. Um, yeah, no, I was planning on on asking Claire to marry me at Wimbledon. Um, but, but it didn't necessarily happen in that way. No, so as you're in the queue, the clouds start to gather, yeah. ponchos are being handed out. What's yeah. going through your mind? At what point do I decide not to do this? Or where do I do it where it's nice and dry? And where's the most romantic place to try and do it in the dry? Because my original plan was to take it down to the training courts, find a nice bench, have some lunch and do it there. Because back then it was nice and quiet. You could go and just sit for hours, couldn't you, and just watch the tennis. So that was my plan. But yeah, it kind of rained all day, didn't it? Yeah. So, Claire, did you have any inkling at all that it might be happening that day? Absolutely no idea whatsoever. No, I was just enjoying my pims and getting my strawberries and doing what we normally do and having a nice time. Had my poncho on and yeah, I just had no idea at all what he had up his sleeve. And he was totally, I didn't know that he was nervous at all, I couldn't tell. So he hid it well anyway, definitely. But the important thing is, you did eventually pop the question, how did you then do it? <laughs> Even better. So I had to, uh, I basically got home, immediately put the ring under the sofa and he just made an excuse, made us a nice cup of tea, coffee, and I just thought, um, I remember getting on the floor and pretending like I was kind of chucking stuff under the sofa, <laughs> and Claire was oblivious, and I was just suddenly ring out, will you marry me? And yeah, sheds of tears, hours of tears. And <laughs> I think I was in at this time, and yeah, I thought you'd lost something under the sofa. I was like, what are you doing on the floor? And then, yeah, so like that. then it did it there and then, so it was lovely. Seven years later, happily married and yeah. back at Wimbledon. I mean, yeah. why, why did you decide to, to share your story? It's, a, it's such an important story to me. I think it's um, obviously I would like to have it to have been better and to actually you know propose here, but it's kind of this is our connection. This is kind of I think we kind of grew together coming here because it's quite early early days for us, yeah. and um, it meant a lot. Tennis, us, Wimbledon. Yeah. yeah, I thought you guys should know about it. I was so glad that you did. It's an awesome story. And you're back here today. You've been in the queue uh, yeah. this this morning. Managed yeah. to get in. Who are you excited about seeing? Um, well, we watched Djokovic earlier, which was brilliant. While well, we had our little picnic on the hill, didn't we? But um, yeah, we're just going to see what, what's on this afternoon and yeah, just enjoy the rest of the day and the sunshine. 
Yeah. Fantastic. And this is this is the first time back since the since the fateful day. Absolutely. Uh, no no big announcements on up your sleeve this time, Matt. Not from me. No. <laughs> Any, anything from you? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing from no me. Listen, guys, thank you so much for sharing your story. Enjoy the rest of your day. And, um, yeah, guys, if you have any of your Wimbledon stories, please do share them with us. We'll try and get as many as we can on the show. Matt, Claire, enjoy your day. And thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you very much. There you go. Wimbledon is for lovers. Now, a lovely story from Matt and Claire there. Mm. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Now, the star power, by the way, on the roof here at the Broadcast Centre is extraordinary because we've just seen the big man, John McEnroe, uh, he's tennis whites as well, trying to be um, subtle with his dark glasses and hat on. He's not going to be doing much sneaking around in those no. whites. No, no, not at, not at all. He's walking around in one little village. <laughs> People are going to see at Johnny Mac. He tried to sneak out of the broadcast centre yesterday just as I was going past. He got about five steps through and then, yeah. He signs a lot of autographs in two weeks. I don't know what the yeah. number is, but it's a lot. I can, yeah, I can imagine as well. Bjorn Borg is also uh, knocking around. We're, uh, I've just lost sight of him. He's on our cakes. So we've got the young, the young champions on our cakes this morning. Forrest uh, Becker. Indeed, yeah, Bjorn Bjorg. And um, yeah, in honour of our happy people yesterday, our happy youthful uh, Coco Goff and Felix Auger Aliassime as well, absolutely, the two youngest people absolutely. in the draw. Right, let's get through some of the social media that we've been uh, spotting. Judy Murray, she's been at the Photoshop again, hasn't she? She always puts good stuff out. She's, she very, she's a good really follow on social media, yes. Judy Murray. She's got a good sense of humour. I really like following her. And the way she talks about Jamie and Andy. You know, she's a loving mum, but she's also likes to have a bit of fun yeah. sometimes at their expense, which I think is really good. Indeed. Hound of the Wimbervilles was her creation this week, which was, um, yeah, a, it was a little bit disturbing. A little bit disturbing scene. It was Holmes and Watson, I thought. I had to look twice yeah. before I realised, OK, that is Andy Murray and that is Pierre Ugerbert, who, we've, of course, he's playing doubles with. Now, a lot of the chatter yesterday was who's he going to be playing mixed? A, is he going to be playing mixed doubles? Yes. And if he does, who's he going to be playing with? Well, he's Cos. confirmed he is going to play mixed doubles. He is going to play, and if he does play, it looks like it's going to be Serena Williams. That seems to be the talk in the locker room at the moment. So I think that would be that when. Would be when might we find out? Well, when they do the draw. So we should find out today. I would imagine it would become clear today because he was asked, and he said possibly was the answer. Did he have a wink in his eye when he said it? Yeah, yeah. So it a bit a, of a glint there, as well. Glint in his eye. So I think <laughs> if it wasn't going to happen. Surely you would just have said deny no, it straight so, out. Yeah. I'm I sure we'll get some. When the minute it's announced, I'm sure there'll be lots of stuff about it on, oh, on social absolutely. media. Absolutely, I think sure. there'll be some. And if there's one too. surefire way to fill whatever court they're playing yeah. on, put Serena and Andy Murray playing doubles together. It's not so. bad. It's a not fair bad. few Wimbledon titles. Uh, some more social media. Then Stan Vavrinka letting us into a little bit of a, a, a secret tennis, not his number one hobby. Well, he likes a barbecue, and this is another thing I really like about Wimbledon and social media is a lot of the players, they tend not to stay in hotels here um, because Wimbledon Village around, you know, you've got Putney not too far away, Fulham. Um, they do tend to stay in houses, rented houses. They'll bring their families over. It's a bit of an occasion. Um, and we get this behind-the-scenes look at them doing domestic stuff. <laughs> doing, sometimes it's, it's fairly inane, so it's, oh, here's me washing my underpants. Yeah. But... Um, <laughs> They do obviously have a bit of fun too, and, yeah. and it was nice to see. Uh, I mean, my mate Joe Wilfred was saying out in Stuttgart he was looking forward to having a little cup of tea in his little garden. He'd already sorted his house out, I think. Yes, and but, I think that that's the oh other my thing word. is. word. <laughs> I love him. I love the man. Joe Wilfred, by the, I tell you what, by the end of the two weeks, we're going to get you a t shirt saying, I love Joe Big Wilfred. Joe. Song, well, an- another, another one. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's um, the thing, I think they spend most, you know, obviously spending their, their lives travelling the world, staying in hotels probably 30 weeks of the year. Yeah. Nice for them to, yeah. to get a bit of home comforts here in London. Oh, absolutely. Talk about home comforts. Oh, a lovely tweet that went out yesterday on social media. A picture of Coco Goff getting a kiss on the cheek from her dad. Yes, and this has to be, I think, the story of of day one. Those photos that were put out. I know the the Wimbledon official uh, Twitter channel and and Instagram put out that lovely tweet as well. You know, it was just a a story written. Um, It was hard to pick, really, beforehand. No one really knew whether she would be, you know... To the, to the stage, we all knew how good she was coming through qualifying, but would she be able to, you know, playing her idol, Venus Williams, uh, on centre court? Um, but it was uh, on, on court one, but it was, it was, you know, it was an amazing occasion for her and for her to win. And then the, the way she was afterwards, I watched the, you know, the post-match interview, she's so gracious. Mm-hmm. You, you, it, she almost doesn't seem 15. No. I think what I was doing at 15 and it wasn't no, anything like me that. <laughs> No, I was me not doing my homework. <laughs> but she also put up a tweet herself, didn't she? There was a picture of her with her hands on her head from what I understand. Mm, which yeah. Is fantastic. And I think the thing with her, you mentioned her father there, is she comes from a sporting family. You know, she, both her parents are athletes. If anyone was destined for greatness, you know, it's her. And I, th- I think 
Macro, we mentioned Macro, he said, didn't he? He said that if, he would be shocked if she wasn't world number one by the age of 20. Oh, the pressure. So, you know, there's a bit of pressure, oh, yeah. but yeah, that's, that's how that. good she is. But that's, you know, you know that has given her five years grace, which is extraordinary. I mean, yeah, a life motto, just wing it, she was telling us before. <laughs> I think that's, all three of us are living our life by that as well, <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty much. But yeah, she's an awesome story. Such a cool girl as well. Like, she, she, we saw her down at the practice courts mm. uh, on Friday, I think it was. And the camera's obviously all trained on her. And um, she was just sort of walking around, like, as soon as the camera, she spotted them. She's like, Mom, they're taking my picture and giving, waving and giving the thumbs up and all that The interesting stuff. thing as well is because she's so young, there's a limit to the number of tournaments mm. she's allowed that's to play. That's what we were talking about the other day. Yeah, we I think it's only 10 or something. So, mm. you know, for the fans, they've been given this, this superstar, this new superstar, but unless they change the rules, yeah. we're only going to be able to see her on a, on a limited number of occasions. It's a bit like a, a massive pop star that only does a certain number <laughs> yeah, of dates. certain number of festivals, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Uh, it's walking of cool girls, Janelle Monet was in the house One yesterday. One of my favourite artists, by the way. I love her music. She's fantastic. Wimbledon's great for celeb spotting. Oh, yes. We saw Catherine Jenkins was, was in yesterday. Rochelle Humes as well was here. Alex Rodriguez Alex as well. Alex Rodriguez. We had A-Rod on, um, on the Wimbledon channel. Yeah. Looking very cool. Mm -hmm. I don't think... Jennifer Lopez was here, no. but uh, he was here. Um, but the Janelle tweet was fantastic. She was here to see Naomi Osaka. Yes, mm, didn't yeah. quite go um, to plan for her. No, <laughs> it's not perhaps to Drake levels in terms of. <laughs> not yet. Well, let's, let's see if, she, <laughs> if she she's back here today. Let's see if she ends up with. It. What I loved about this though was that, that it wasn't so much Janelle's face, but the lady over her shoulder mm. with a, with an extraordinary pose, extraordinary facial expression. <laughs> yeah, it, you can see the picture here. It was, yeah. a, it was a, a priceless. A priceless picture. Indeed. Uh, now, some of you guys as well have been getting in touch. Please do remember to uh, join the story. Hashtag join the story. Get on the Facebook page as well. Wimbledon join the story. Hashtag Wimbledon. Tell us your stories. That is exactly what Rinny did uh, out in the queue camping for the first time in 10 years. I remember camping in the queue. I've never done did it. Did you? Yes, it was I've an never interesting camped. experience. No. It was good. You've never camped? <laughs> never camped. I've been in the queue once. I was in there for seven hours just to get in. It was well worth it. I was very sunburned by the end of it. More so than I am today. It's just so English. It's yeah. like the most English thing ever. Everyone's so polite. You know, you kind of nip away and you get your, your spot back and all this sort of thing. So, yeah, it was, it was a... If you haven't had an opportunity to do it once in your lifetime, you've got to do the Wimbledon queue. How long were you camping for? How many days? Uh, I only did a day, but there are people who do two or three days. I think that they start the queue for Monday... People are there, for, I would say, Friday or early on Saturday. Well, it officially opens on the Sunday morning yeah. at 8 o'clock. We, yeah. we went over on Sunday night. and uh, Met yeah. some brilliant characters over there. But there's, characters. there's people, this is probably the... It's a real family atmosphere oh, yeah. as well yeah, because is. everyone, you know, you're there for so long that you've what, got your neighbours and everything. What I love even more is, but perhaps even more British than the queue, is the queue to get in the queue. Because they'll, they'll camp to get in the yeah, queue yeah, on that's Sunday. They'll start on Friday yeah. and, and that is a pre-queue to the queue. Over. <laughs> and I, what I liked as well was... So you, you'd have the lines of tents, and then you know if you wanted something from next door, you, people would go and like kind of knock on the door. But it, you know, it was yeah, it was good. Yeah, plenty of dogs about. We didn't find them. I was promised a, a pug and a husky. Found neither. Yeah, of Danny them. was really Furious. disappointed about that. If there are any dogs out there in the queue, do tell me. <laughs> Tweet us and I'll come out and find you. Um, and also, we have to say hello uh, to Cheryl McCollin on Facebook. She is going to be on Centre Court today with a friend, Karen. Hello to uh, Cheryl and Hi, Karen. Hey, They're Cheryl. looking forward to seeing Roger Federer and Ashley Barty, who says that are their number They've one They've got a good favorite. day as well. Centre today. Brilliant day. Roger Federer and Ashley Barty. It's a great, I mean, yesterday was good too, but to, today, you know, Centre Court ticket. That's yeah, the one you brilliant. want, Absolutely. isn't it? And we know the world number one on the men's single side, Novak Djokovic. He's a big fan of social media as well. He's <laughs> been posting up an Instagram selfie. Yeah, he need, I think he needs to work on his framing, though. <laughs> because it was him yes. and his coaching team. But it was, well, he's it was, put out what? some interesting photos of the last couple of days. But it was good to see Goran. I, you know, that's everyone here at Wimbledon yeah. loves Goran Ivanisovic. He's such a character. Um, he needs to maybe put some sunscreen on. He looked like he'd been in the sun. I think Saturday and Sunday. It was so mm. hot here. Um, yeah, it was, he perhaps needs to... To put some sunscreen on, he's looking a little bit burnt. But. I think that's the message of the day today yeah. wear your sunscreen. I mean, I'm going to put the stones down in this glass house of mine because <laughs> if you saw me on Sunday, I was, yeah, very, very red indeed. Now, you're, you're off to here in England. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're not used to it, not used to being outside. Um, you're off to, to go and be on the Wimbledon channel. Mm. Where, can we find, where can we find you? Yes, you can uh, follow us. We're on the uh, Wimbledon website. You can watch the stream on there and then all of the broadcast partners around the world. So. Yeah, we're, we're going it's out gonna around the globe. It's going to be a bumper day for you, another bumper day for you, for yes, sure. Yeah, yeah. Indeed. Who are you most excited about seeing today? Who's the, the I'm looking one? forward to this match that's playing just beneath us Indeed. on Court 18. First match, Dan Evans, um, who's had a 
you know, some tough times in his career, but he's, he's on the comeback trail. He's a great player to watch. A um, lot of sliced backhands. It's kind of old school tennis. Indeed. Um, I'm, I'm looking you. forward to watching I'm that. Awesome enjoy that. It. Enjoy that. Thanks for joining us. And thanks for yeah. watching this morning, of course. Yes, we're going to be back uh, tomorrow as well. Make sure you keep joining the story with the hashtag and on Facebook. Uh, use the hashtag women and hashtag join the story. And uh, yeah, enjoy the day if you're coming down. Enjoy the day if you're not. If you're watching on TV, we, I don't think, are going to move. We're going to be watching a bit of that Dan Evans match. It's filling up rather nicely behind us as the wind just picks up there. But yes, we'll be the same time tomorrow on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. Make sure you join us there. And until then, we'll oh, see, see you there. See, Goodbye. See you tomorrow. Cheers.